everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, today's video, I wanted to talk about positions and lines. So I've had many of you messaging me in regards to what positions people should be in and where they should be during a wedding day. So I thought I would just jump on and do um, a YouTube video about it just to help um, sort of explain. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I want to talk about receiving lines first. So what is a receiving line? So if you have a, a quite a large wedding um, guest amount of people coming, um, you might not have the chance to say hi to everyone. So a receiving line is a great way to ensure that you say hi to all of your wedding guests and you don't miss anyone out. So let's just say you've now been married, you then go off into your drinks reception. So your drinks reception is where you'll have your canapes, some music, um, you'll have all your family photos, and it's just a nice time for you to sort of enjoy the day and say hi to everyone. Um, if you quite a large wedding party, um, you might not get the chance to say hi to everyone in that time. And I know that this is a big concern for some couples, and they're like, right, we've got like over 100 guests coming, there's no way we're going to be able to say hi to everyone. So a receiving line is some... Thing to sort of consider. Um, so after you've been married, you will then maybe wait at the door where your drinks reception will start. So a receiving line will usually consist of the bride and groom and both of the parents. You can include your siblings or your ushers or your bridesmaids if you want to. It also depends on how much time you have, okay? So you would literally create a line, a line into the drinks reception and this is where your guests will come through one by one start kissing you say hello um and you'll just greet them and make sort of small talk and then you know in your head that you've said hi to everyone you've done your part and now you can sort of relax um guys this is quite time consuming okay so if you're um a large wedding party of over 100 guests, I might not recommend this um, because it's going to take you at least half an hour um, and you've always got that one auntie and uncle who just wants to chat all the time. You've got this giant queue just forming um, to even get into the room. So maybe if your wedding guests numbers are slightly less, it's a really nice idea. And um, what I would do if you're a, a larger guest number, so anything 80 or plus, I would recommend that you do this during your wedding breakfast meal. So when you are all sat down, you've just had your starters, there's sort of a lull, um, you're waiting for the caterers to clear away the plates, they're gonna be topping up your wines. This is a really good opportunity for you two to get up and go to table to table to say hi to everyone, okay? I don't mean you have to physically go to each person on each table, just stand there, greet the table, make some more talk, and then they've sort of had some interaction with you. And it's a nice idea um, because they can congratulate you if they haven't seen you yet. Um, and also it kind of keeps everyone entertained during that lull when um, they're waiting for the next course. And you can do this table by table. Um, and this kind of breaks it up a bit for you. So rather than doing the long receiving line, um, for half an hour we just stood there saying hi. It can get a bit tedious. Um, so you might want to break it up, say hi to some people really casually in your drinks reception, and then officially say hi to everyone during the wedding breakfast meal if you want to, okay? So as I said, I would recommend um, doing a receiving line if you're a small wedding guest number. Um, if saying hi to everyone is important to you, or if you can run around and say hi to everyone, usually the drinks reception is um, a good time to do all your photos, so you might not have the time. So um, receiving line if you're smaller guest numbers, and then maybe for larger guest numbers, do it during the wedding breakfast meal. I've also had many people um, ask me to do a video in regards to how um, people walk up and down the aisle. So traditionally, what positions they should be in, what order everyone should be in. Um, and the, the short answer is, guys, it's completely up to you, okay? Most of the time, traditions have just gone out the window. Um, it's 2021 now, so um, everyone's sort of doing what they want. And um, usually for the bridal party, for walking down the aisle, it usually consists of the page boys, the flower girls, the bridesmaids, the uh, maid of honour and the bride and her father, okay? Um, I've had a couple of mother of the brides say, well, I'd like to walk down the aisle. Again, this is absolutely fine. So 
usually it's quite overwhelming walking into the ceremony space. Um, so what I'd recommend is if you have um, siblings, so a brother or an uncle or um, a nice sort of gentleman to walk your mum down the aisle so she's not walking down by herself, it's a really nice sort of way to kick off um, the sort of bridal party. So once everyone's seated, um, your mum's probably in the makeup room helping you get ready and saying her goodbyes and things. So it would be nice to have an usher or a, um, a male figure stood at the door just to, um, you know, guide your mum and so she doesn't have to walk in on her own. Uh, it's just a polite thing to do. It also ensures that the registrars or the vicar, whoever's officiating the service, sort of know that you're there and you're on your way. Um, so once the mother of the bride is sort of in, it's like, right, okay, we're ready to rock and roll. So um, she doesn't come into music. It is just sort of casually, she just kind of like swerves on in there. Um, so once she's in, um, it, it will be then for the bridal party to start walking down the aisle. So um, there's two ways you could do this. So the English traditional way is that the bride and the dad go first, followed by the bridesmaids, the post boys and the flower girls, okay? I haven't done a wedding in a while where that's happened. Usually now, us brides, I say us brides, I'm not a bride. <laughs> Um, like to be at the back and save like the best for last like she's coming she's on her way so um how I would recommend doing it is have your your page boy go first so he might be the ring bearer perhaps oh he's got a little sign saying she's on her way he walks in first Um, a little tip is to have a um the, the parent of that child just sort of like in eyes um in eyes gaze so the child isn't like a deer in the headlights so he doesn't know where to walk to he can just walk straight to the parent so it's nice and flowing um so you've got the page boy followed by the flower girls if you've got a couple of lovely little small flower girls and um, put some petals out um great and then after the flower girl you'll then have the bridesmaids again doesn't matter which bridesmaids goes first if it was my wedding I would personally maybe go in height order or um, age order. Um, it's completely up to you how you want to do it. And then the last bridesmaid to enter would be your maid of honour um, because they're usually like your sibling or a best friend, that, you know, your go-to girl. And so you want her to be sort of with you behind the door, giving you all that prep talk before you, before you start heading on down. So once she goes, then you and your dad or a father figure can then start walking down the aisle. Once you've then been married, you will then have to start walking back up the aisle. So um, again, sometimes it's a free for all. You've just been married. Everyone wants to go and get a drink. Um, but if you want to do it in a nice orderly fashion, then traditionally it will be the groom and the bride who've just been married. They will then exit first, followed by, um, again, this is all if you want to do it. There, You've got the ushers and the bridesmaids coming from two different points. They um, would usually partner up with each other, couple up and walk together. So you'd have your ushers on this side, bridesmaids, and they would walk arm in arm, sort of back towards the, um, back towards down the aisle. Um, and then the flower girls and the page boys would probably be with their parents. So I would have your ushers and your bridesmaids, followed by your both sets of parents, and then allow the rest of your immediate family, followed by um, friends to follow um, and that's sort of a nice way to get everyone outside ready to throw the confetti or have some photos outside as well so I do hope that helps and um, again comment below if you've got any questions in regards if you've got a certain order um, that you've got and you just want to double check with me now let's talk about positions on the top table okay um so traditionally you'll have like a long top table or the official top table where the bride and groom will be sat for their wedding breakfast meal okay loads of couples um really worry about who should be sat on this table um i honestly wouldn't worry about offending anyone guys it's your wedding day um the last thing you want to do is sort of work yourself up in a frenzy that you haven't set someone on your top table okay there's loads of ways you can do it um traditionally it would be the bride and groom sat in the center of the top table and then you'll have the parents next to them as well um sometimes people like to do so if i find the bride for example i would then have um the groom's dad there or i might my, my mum you could do either side so 
my uh, partner's parents on my side and then my parents on his side to sort of switch it round. If it was my wedding, I would want my parents on my side um, just so you can have that nice interaction with them. So you might have your mum and then your dad um, followed by your bridesmaids or um, even siblings. I'm a triplet. I don't know if anyone knew that. I'm a triplet, so um, I they would probably be my bridesmaids anyway. But if you're especially close to anyone in your family, you can put them on the top table as well. Um, so you would have your parents either side of you, followed by your maid of honour, followed by your ushers and your bridesmaids. Um, I get you know asked a lot that um some parents and some couples are divorced or they're separated and they don't know if they should put their partner's parents on the top tables it's completely up to you every family is different um there's some families who are like no i'm not speaking to them or they've just had a new partner so they don't really know them and um, what i'd recommend doing if your um biological parents are happy to sit next to each other I think ask them to it's only one day um, if they're you know amicable with each other and they're friendly and they'll chat then have them on there and their partners can be on another table uh, separately i would probably suggest um uh, but again um it's complete up to you if you want their pet if they're their new partners on there it's all something you're going to have to speak to them um about prior to the event um but again it's you know it doesn't have to not be that if you don't want it to be um and then yes you've got your um bridesmaids and your ushers either side of you as well um i would recommend having your um immediate family so if you've got more siblings or like your if you're really close to your auntie and uncle have them close to you on your tables as well um just so they sort of feel um, closer to you to the top table and they're not like in the corner like the furthest away um i hope that helps um everyone <laughs> please do let me know if you um have got any questions i am going to do another video in regards to traditions and seating arrangements as well to help so um please do give me a like and a comment if you thought this was helpful. Please do share. And again, guys, please subscribe to my channel because there's loads more videos coming. Um, take care of yourselves. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.